G'day everyone and welcome to our lesson on Faraday's Law in which we're going to look at several very difficult or at least I think challenging practice questions to do with electromagnetic induction. So familiarize yourself with this formula up here. The magnitude of the electromagnetic induction, saying nothing of its direction for now, is equal to the number of loops, say if we're dealing with a coil, if it's just a loop then n equals 1, multiplied by the change in flux over the change in time. And flux is equal to the strength of the magnetic field multiplied by the area, provided these two are actually at right angles. If the magnetic field lines are parallel to the area like that, we get no flux at all. But pretend that well, this applies with a normal multiplication symbol when they're at right angles. And they are in this question we're looking at down here. So we have a little loop, 8 centimetres by 8 centimetres, moving at 2 centimetres per second this way, across the face of this north pole of a magnet. And the strength of the magnetic field uh, across this face here is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the negative 2 teslas. And going by the dots here, it's coming out of the page. The challenge for this question is, assuming that this loop is travelling in a straight line at 2 centimetres per second across the face of this magnet and assuming the strength of the magnetic field outside here is zero, we're going to graph the flux and then the voltage over time. So first of all, graphing the flux over time. The flux out here equals zero because we said the strength of the magnetic field equals zero. However, as this loop approaches the magnet, when it just comes to this point, here. We'll only deal with the loop for now. We'll forget this part here because that's just measuring the current. So as it approaches this point here, as soon as this lip of the loop starts to overlap the face of the magnet, like so, we do get some flux through this loop here. And then as the loop moves further and further onto the face of the magnet, like that, the flux comes to a maximum. But notice, as the loop moves from here to here, the area of the loop is not changing, and the magnetic field strength is not changing, so the flux is at a constant maximum. Then as the loop starts leaving the face of the magnet, the area uh, which receives magnetic field lines becomes smaller, so flux starts to go down. And finally, flux will become zero here because there's no more magnetic field going through this loop. The magnetic field outside the magnet is zero in strength. So we get the feeling that flux starts out at zero, climbs to some maximum, stays at that maximum, and then goes down again. But we should be careful because we've got to fill in our time values and we'll also find the strength of the magnetic field. We know at times it's zero. Let's figure out the maximum flux uh, the maximum flux able to pass through this loop here. Flux is equal to BA. The maximum will occur when the loop is inside this region. So that's equal to 1.3 times 10 neg 2 times. The area is given by 8 centimetres times 8 centimetres. That's 8 times 10 neg 2 squared, which is equal to I have here eight point three two times ten to the negative five. Two times ten to the negative five. That is the maximum flux which this loop will experience. So we'll say it starts off at zero as it's traveling along here. And then when the loop gets to this point here, the flux starts to build. We'll say that it happens at one, one second in. So that's, that is a two centimeter distance there. At one second, the flux will begin to climb. And it climbs linearly like that to a maximum. And then it will also drop linearly like that. Let's figure out how long it takes 
for the loop to go from all the way outside the face of the magnet to all the way inside. So we'll draw its position at t equals 1 and then its position once it's fully inside. How long did it take for this lip to move over to here or for this lip here to move over to here? Well this is 8 centimeters so the lip here has to move 8 centimeters to get to that point there and it's moving at 2 centimeters per second. So we think it takes 8 distance divided by velocity equals time, 8 centimeters divided by 2 centimeters per second, that's 4 seconds to move completely inside there. So I'm going to have to re-sketch my graph since the scale is so awful. Take this back, re-sketch my axes, so we set at 1 second it starts to climb, and then 4 seconds later it's totally within uh, the bounds of the magnet. The magnet is, I might have not said this at the start, 12 centimeters in length there, so it takes 6 seconds for that loop to move through. This lip here will reach the opposite side after 6 seconds. However, the time between when it's completely inside, so that will be 2 centimeters, and that's 10 centimeters there, until the time when it starts to just begin to leave. It's only got to move 8 centimeters. So that'll be 4 seconds where it's sitting at a constant flux. And then 4 seconds later, it's completely out of the face of the magnet. So the flux starts out at zero, climbs up over four seconds to a maximum, stays at that maximum for quite a short time, only four seconds again, and then drops back down over four seconds to zero. This is a graph of our flux. Now let's figure out the voltage and the current flowing through this loop here. When the loop begins to move into this magnetic field, it will experience an increase in flux coming out of the page. So in that direction there. The current will flow in that loop to oppose that change in flux. So using the right hand grip rule, the current will flow in that direction. If you put your thumb in the direction of the current and then wrap your fingers around the wire, your fingers will push down into the page and oppose that change in flux. We're expecting the current to flow in that direction whilst it's entering the face of the magnet. As it's leaving, it did have a lot of flux coming out of the page and over here it's got nothing. So it will try to replace that flux and in this case we put our thumb in the direction of current and then we wrap our fingers around again and they're coming towards us, so we're producing flux out of the page there. And that would indicate the current is flowing in that direction. Notice the direction of the current has swapped around. So we're going to get both positive and negative voltages. Voltage is only induced when the flux is changing, here and here. Where the flux is constant, whether it's at a maximum or a minimum constant, we will get zero voltage. So we have zero voltage and then all of a sudden we have some positive voltage between one second and five seconds and then zero voltage again. Then at nine seconds we get voltage in the opposite direction at 13 seconds back down to zero. The graph of the voltage is the gradient function of the graph of the flux multiplied by n. So let's figure out the voltage induced here. We know that the magnitude of the voltage is equal to n equals 1 times the change in flux, that would be between 0 and 8.32 times 10 to the negative 5, and it's occurring 
over four seconds. So that's 8.32 times 10 neg 5 divided by 4, 2.08 times 10 to the negative 5 voltage, a minuscule amount of voltage.